Okay, let's go. This is our first possibly slightly tricky task. Let's see if we can do it together. Hopefully you have already tried it yourselves, but if you haven't gotten all the way through, I'm just going to type in the packages that we use. They're, they're the typical ones, as you might expect. Percent matplotlib inline is a cell magic which allows us to see matplotlib graphs in our notebooks. The directories and paths have been defined for us, and we're reading in the data that we've previously saved, the DFO data set, and although we don't actually need it in this workbook, I'm just showing you how you might read in, for example, the variables which are independent and numeric from this particular dictionary that we saved into o2 underscore vars. Right, remove all cases where lot area is greater than 20,000 square foot. We're doing that because when I did the graphs, including those houses, they are slightly outliers and the graph will get squashed in one direction. It's just nicer not to have them. Let's just see how big our data is. So we have 2,922 examples. Let's get an index of the outliers. DFL lot area, we'll get all the lot areas greater than 20,000. What does that look like? You can see it's just a series of true and false, and we will use that to create a cut down version of DFL. We want the opposite of those outliers, so we want to keep not the outliers, and we will just see what the shape is now. So we have lost just under 100 examples. For this particular exercise, that doesn't matter. Right, create a graph. I hope you have created your own graph. Let's just do a matplotlib graph. I'd be very happy for you to share code on Moodle for this kind of work so that people can see alternatives to my somewhat basic code. As usual, we'll start by creating a figure and we'll define the size of the figure to be 10 inches by 6 inches, for example. We'll add a subplot. Which is just one by one and we'll print our graph in the position one, which is all there is. On this one axis, we will put a scatter, which on the x axis, x axis will have lot area, and on the y axis, we will have the sale price. Those dots are quite big. Let's make the dots a bit smaller. The argument is S, and let's add a title. Well, first let's add some labels on the axes, set x label. Lot area. So my label sale price in dollars and a um, title for the plot. Something like that. Now, I can't say I find this massively useful. There does seem to be some kind of upward trend in the middle. At the beginning, you can kind of see something which looks slightly unusual. What I'd actually like to do is to try summarizing the data first and then plotting it. Imagine we divide the lot area into maybe 50 different bands and for each band, we plot the mean. We might see a little bit more clearly what's going on. So I'm just going to have a go at doing that. The first thing we'll do is we'll create some quantiles using a function called PD cut. So we have some quantiles. That's the start. How many do we have in each quantile? You can see there are different amounts in each quantile, and especially at the higher quantiles, they are much less. We could have used QCut. QCut would have carefully put the same amount of data into each percentile. I actually don't want to do that here. That wouldn't be massively helpful. Now we are going to create a group by data frame. 
with just a few things in it. Quantile, lot area, sale price, and the group by is going to be quantile so that we can we'll be able to summarize by quantile. Oops. What is this thing over here? Is it a data frame? Is it a series? Let's have a look. You can see that it's a certain call of it's a certain type of data frame which is called a group by data frame. It's been grouped by quantile, and now we can do summaries at the level of quantile. So here we go. DF group by well aggregate some of the data or lot area within each group we will find the mean and likewise for sale price in each group we will find the mean this is beginning to look like it might be useful because we can now plot lot area against that sale price let's just save this into some data frame and then rather than using matplotlib we'll be a little bit lazy and we'll use pandas inbuilt plot method for data frames. Good. That's to me a little bit more useful. You can see very clearly that in general there is an increasing trend of sale price as lot area increases, which is what you would expect. But at the bottom there seems to be something interesting going on and at the top it tails off. This also should give us a little bit of a warning that a simple linear model isn't going to work very well for this data set unless we do something a little bit intelligent with a lot area. For now, however, we're going to carry on and just try to fit a simple linear model. Hopefully you've read through some of the notes that I've left you. We covered this in the video lecture. We are going to need to implement this formula over here for the mean squared error and the two gradients. Let's do that. First of all, a function which defines mean square error. Well, n equals that's the length of x. So we know how much data we have, how many items of data. Now get the predictions. The predictions is going to be our intercept beta naught plus beta one times x. Because these are numpy arrays, they will multiply through nicely. The, the beta one will be replicated as many times as it needs to multiply each item in x. The errors are equal to y minus y hat. And finally, mean square error equals 1 over n times the sum, the sum of the square of the errors. Hopefully that works. Now for the gradients, we know the formulas of the gradients. They're up here, for example, minus 2 over n times the sum of the errors squared. So I'm just going to copy the bit of the code that I need, which is the first three over there. Finally, delta naught, which is the first gradient. Maybe I should have called that g naught, but anyway, times minus 2 times the sum of the errors. As we saw in lecture, if the sum of the errors was zero, that essentially means we've got the intercept correct. So this gradient would be zero and no change would be made to the intercept. Now delta one equals one over n times minus two. And here we have an x in the brackets as discussed in the lectures, this is essentially giving us a correlation of the errors with of the errors with x. If there's a positive correlation, then we need to increase the slope, and that's what we'll do with gradient descent. Let's just test our function quickly. Let's create an array. Those are the x values. Let's imagine we have some y values, which are well, one, two, three, four. Let's assume beta naught. So there's zero intercept and a slope of one. Now in this situation, 
predictions on x will be 0, 1, 2, 3. There will be an error of 1 over here. 1 squared is 1. All the other errors are 0, and therefore the mean error should be a quarter. So let's see if our function gets that right. It does. That's good. There are numeric ways to test gradient functions, but we will not cover those in this course.